Hello, everyone, and welcome to Case Reports. Thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, we basically have three topics between rheumatology, neurology, and general practice. General practice did win, obviously, which is why we're here right now. Um, Rushad, shout out to him. He's the one who picked it. Uh, he usually says the process is rigged whenever he doesn't win, but hey, we won. Okay, so, uh, and one last thing is I do apologize if you hear doors being slammed right and left. I picked the worst location ever, so I do apologize about that one. Now, let's dive into the case. So, the name or the title is Fatal Outcome of Anaplastic Thyroid Tumors. So, what is anaplastic thyroid cancer? It is basically a rare form of thyroid cancer that is very uh, well known to have very poor prognosis with even appropriate management, very aggressive, tends to uh, invade locally, goes to the lymph nodes, and metastasizes often. So we have uh, a patient who came in, uh, he's an elderly patient, 79 year old, uh, presented with um, a large neck mass within weeks led to his death, unfortunately. So again, anaplastic thyroid tumors, they're very aggressive. Uh, they tend to lead to uh, death within the first year of diagnosis. Um, they also, um, because of their growth, tend to compromise structures in the neck, uh, like the trachea and the arteries. So our patient it was a 79-year-old. Uh, he was being monitored outpatient with checkups every six months for the past four years. He had a two-centimeter left thyroid nodule, which was confirmed to be benign. And then he came back that he noticed it was enlarging and then he measured it was six centimeter this time. So given this rapid growth, they decided to uh, schedule him for thyroidectomy four weeks later. Three weeks in, he came back. Uh, his nodule was increased in diameter, was nine centimeter. On admission, they did chest x-ray as you can see in A and they found that his trachea was uh, deviated to the right. Two hours later, they did another chest x-ray and they found that uh, there was dense infiltrates in both lungs, suggestive of bronchopneumonia. They did also a CT, as you can see in CND, that showed cervical and mediastinal thyroid mass pushing the trachea towards the right side. So you can see this is the mass and this is the trachea, and this is the mass, this is the trachea. So their investigation was basically saying that, hey, uh, let's do an autopsy, they asked the family, they did find that the thyroid was 315 grams compared to normal, which was 40. And you, you can see this is the measurements. So given the aggressive and quick fatal outcome of this disease, the suspicion was very uh, likely for anaplastic thyroid cancer, which was later confirmed, obviously, with the autopsy findings, as well as um, they did uh, immunohistochemistry techniques. The grade was four. As you can see in A here, we, we have a lung that showed multiple whitish nodules, usually it was less than one centimeter. And in B, uh, you can see that confirmed uh, or detailed view of the right lung. And then these was confirmed to be metastasis from the thyroid uh, neoplasm, primary thyroid neoplasm. You can see here in B, we have um, basically the gland split open with uh, cystic and solid zones and areas of hemorrhage. So they said basically the aim of the study was to give an illustrative clinical picture of the aggressive behavior of an aplastic thyroid carcinoma uh, with a clear educational purpose. They did say that it's not frequently witnessed with such profuse presentation with plenty of symptoms and pathological features as we can see from our patient. Um, I forgot to mention that he actually came in complaining of um, fever. I think I hear, yep, fever, dysphagia, general malaise. On exam, he had um, cachexia, dyspnea, and hyperextension of the neck. Okay, so one last thing is they did mention that it's worth noting that our patient was scheduled for a thyroidectomy four weeks later with when the mass was six centimeters. They believe that there was no justification for having delayed a final aspiration technique. And it's likely that the, both the di diagnosis and the outcome would have been the same, but the patient would have benefited from palliative care medicine. I completely agree with that one, the last point. 
Thank you guys for joining me again, and hopefully we'll see you guys next time. See you. Bye-bye.